Forget what you think you know about feederism, because the actual reality is not how many people have come to perceive it. Sensationalist media coverage in the press and online has tried to give it a bad reputation, one of selfish and uncaring relationships where one person takes advantage of another, pressuring a partner to gain weight for their own sexual gratification without any consideration for their partner's health or well-being. The stigma that comes with being fat or those who are attracted to fatness in today's society is also a reason why people have the misconception that feederism is harmful and emotionally abusive. So what actually is feederism? Well, we all know that it's a sexual fetish that people engage with, but what do they do? Well, people who are into feederism are often fat already and want to gain more weight. Or they are people who like others that are fat and like to encourage them to gain weight. So the basic principle is that one person in the relationship provides the food and the other eats it with the intention of getting fatter, which gives both people sexual gratification. But why would they want to do this? As with all sexual fetishes, it's derived from pleasure. The pleasure of being fat and soft to touch, the pleasure of eating and feeling full, being able to fulfill fantasies of gaining weight and able to indulge and eat whatever you like, whenever you want. People who actively engage with feederism as a fetish also look for long-term partners who they can explore their sexual urges and fantasies with. When in a committed feederism relationship, feederism is about shared and mutual pleasure. Just as with any normal relationship or sexual interaction, both parties involved are consenting. They are equally interested in feederism. And most importantly, there are boundaries that are discussed before entering a relationship of this nature. Feeders are not evil creatures that lurk around every kitchen to fatten up unsuspecting men and women against their will. They are everyday people who just so happen to love fat individuals and the idea of fattening them, as long as that's what their partner wants too. Feeders' partners are called feedees. They self-identify and actively search for feeders to have relationships with as well. It's not all one-sided. As with all relationships, they share their fantasies and desires. But with feederism, when sexual desires are acted out, there are real-life consequences, which involve becoming fatter. Both the feeder and feedee know the inevitable effects, and this is something they both encourage and accept as part of their relationship. The only reason this seems concerning for the general public is because being fat is still not accepted in our society. It's considered wrong and unhealthy. So for those of us who enjoy being fat, or others that like fat, we are seen as odd. So why do people become feeders and feedees? As with all fetishes, they often develop from experiences we have while growing up and exploring as we become adults. Feeders describe their feelings as a need to care and nurture for their partners, being able to assist their partner grow, fulfilling their wants and desires, especially when it comes to food and cravings. Gaining weight is a physical representation of how much a feeder cares for their feedee. They have provided for their partner, lovingly prepared and cooked delicious meals, affectionately adored their feedee and their bellies after they've consumed food, all in the name of making their feedee happy, appreciated, and most importantly, assisting them to reach their weight gain goals. Feedees love to eat, some people just love food, and what's wrong with that? We all love chocolates and cakes, but feedies are not concerned with getting fat like other people, and they indulge in this pleasure. They want to be with someone who understands this and appreciates their hedonistic passion for food and eating. Getting fatter is a prime goal in a feedies life, so it makes sense that feeders and feedies work well together as they enable and support each other's desires and lifestyle choices. Of course there are many fat men and women who are unhappy with their weights and eating habits. However, you have to remember this isn't all fat people. Some, and more than you think, are actually happy with their bodies. Feedies love being able to overindulge and take pleasure in knowing that they have people to appreciate their appetites and larger bodies. They share the feeding experience in mutual consenting acts. And a feeder is not going to want to be with a fat person who is not happy in themselves. It literally doesn't make sense as a pairing. The mindsets are completely opposite, which would lead to a conflicting relationship, as both would be fighting against each partner's wants and desires. So nobody is being taken advantage of. We're all aware of the consequences with being actively involved in this fetish. 
to sum up, feederism is not as scary as you think. We're not all weirdos with uncontrollable urges to consume everything in sight or to fatten everyone we meet. We are like-minded individuals making adult choices about our eating habits, bodies, sexual preferences and relationships, just like you. So if feederism is something you're interested in and want to find out more, then head over to fantasyfeeder.com to get involved. <laughs>